Hello friends, I'm back after a short medical break and I thank my online family for all the lovely messages and emails and uh, 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 kind of uh, WhatsApp messages that you guys send me. I'm hale and hearty and I'm back to normal. I'm recuperating very well. I uh, uh, could not make a video last week, but I uh, managed to uh, file my weekly Live Mint article, which contains a lot of statistical data. And I hope you uh, have uh, uh, kind of checked it out from my social media accounts where I put up a hyperlink to that. I'm going to take off from where we left off in that article. And in this video, I'm going to talk about specifically whether the election results in Karnataka will have a material uh, kind of bearing or impact on stock prices. So let's dive right in and uh, let's take a look at what the elections have in store for the markets. Uh, a caveat here, at the time of recording this video, the final results are not yet out. So I don't know who's got a clear mandate, but it looks like from the leads that the uh, uh, opposition party, the Congress is winning. Now, will that have a material impact on the market? In my humble opinion, not too much for the simple reason that this is something the exit polls were already talking about and therefore the markets had ample time to prepare for it. Does it mean that it will have a zero impact? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that there will be zero impact, but initially, it may not have as much of an impact as a surprise defeat for the BJP would have had. So that surprise element is not there. Now we take forward and go to what my core competency is analyzing statistical data, the kind of uh, in-house uh, studies and uh, features that you will never get anywhere else on the internet. So on your screen right now is the market roundup window, which tells me that it was the banking space which led the rally from the front because the bank nifty gained more than the nifty 50. The US dollar index, the Dixie, gained sharply and that had a, a, a pulverizing impact on uh, silver as well as crude oil. And gold just managed to keep its head above the water and natural gas flared up. Do remember, since the last three or four weeks, I have been telling you that there is a divergence of trends between oil and gas prices and this divergence may just sustain. The USD INR, which is the US dollar index, US dollar against the Indian rupee gained 50 basis points. That means the rupee weakened and this is a mild concern. The Indian 10 year benchmark bond yield fell intra-week below the 7% round number, but it managed to close at 7.01. So bond prices are up, which has resulted in a mark-to-market profit for the bank's bond portfolio, and therefore the bank nifty gained an extra few notches. NSE gained market capitalization, which tells me that uh, uh, the rally was somewhat broad-based. MWPL has risen sharply and the US indices provided headwinds because the Dow and the S&P 500 fell, whereas the Nasdaq gained a little. But do remember, technology shares have been beaten down sharply. So this is a temporary pullback rally. Let's now come to the in-house indicators. We start with the market wide position limits or MWPL. Now, this is the percentage limit that is actually utilized by traders as compared to what is allowed by the regulator, which is SEBI. What you are seeing is the bottom that was made after the expiry of April was higher than the bottom made after the expiry of March. That tells you that risk appetite had already started increasing. Now, two weeks after the expiry, we are at 32.48%. And that's the highest in the 20 week period covered by this chart. So people have written out checks and the bulls and bears are actually enhancing their commitments, betting against each other, which should lead to higher volatility because one of the two parties has to lose and the other will see outsized gains coming in their direction. 
So high MWPL should ideally translate to higher statistical beta or intraday volatility, but risk appetite is up. Let's now come to the stock and index futures turnover. This is a total of all trading sessions of the week. And this is three concurrent series, which is May, June and July. What we are seeing is that turnover in both the indices and stock futures went up. So trader participation was higher. So risk appetite higher, trader participation also higher. Coming now on your screen is the NSE advanced decline ratio. Now do remember as the chart heading says, this is the average of all five uh, uh, trading days of the week. And what you are seeing is that the advanced decline ratio has eased marginally to 1.11 against the prior week's 1.28, which means that for every 100 losing stocks, there were 111 gaining stocks. So the bulls still maintained their hold over the market, intraday players, that is. But their, their, their command, their uh, uh, grip over the market seemed to have slipped just a little bit. There was slight amount of nervousness evident. Let's now come to the basis. What is the basis? It's the premium or discount prevalent in the future as compared to spot. Normally, basis is positive, which is the future should be trading above the spot and on expiry, the basis converges or becomes zero on expiry day. But in the case of the bank nifty, what you are seeing is that basis has inverted, which means the future is at 36 rupees 40 naya paisa discount to spot, which tells me that two marshmallow traders don't bother about the marshmallow theory. Uh, the uh, a tutorial video to what the marshmallow theory is in trading in the description as well as the pinned comment below this video. So two marshmallow traders have been unwinding long positions and even shorting at higher levels on the bank nifty. Clearly, they don't seem to be buying into the bullish hypothesis. We'll come to more reasons why when I cover the bank nifty chart in greater detail. Even the nifty's basis has come down very sharply and we must watch out for basis inversion here as well. Let's take a look at the impetus. This is our exclusive in-house indicator which you've loved and trusted for two years. Now the impetus has fallen on both the indices and the fact that uh, the both indices logged gains on a week on week basis tells you that there's a divergence between the impetus and the price. And that is a cause for a small red flag, which means the force in the buying was absent. The rally has basically been on poor conviction levels. It could be because that elections in Karnataka were around the corner and traders were playing a wait and watch game. That's all fine. But ideally, the price and impetus should rise together to indicate a sustainable up move. Now for another in-house indicator that you have uh, learned to trust so much for over six quarters now, the Lift Weight Thrust Drag Index, the LWTD. This is again exclusive to our in-house statistical model, the IBEX. You won't get it anywhere else in the internet domain. What you are seeing is that the Nifty might have gained 1.36%, but the LWTD has fallen below zero to minus 0 0.20 after staying above the zero mark for a fortnight in a row. That tells you that higher levels, because the Nifty has gained uh, uh, on, on a week on week basis, so I'm talking about higher levels rather than declines, at higher levels, Fresh buying support indicated by the LWTD may be relatively lower compared to the prior week. The daily chart of this uh, uh, LWTD indicator is updated on my social media accounts and uh, the most amount of work is always shared on Telegram first. So do make it a point to subscribe to our free channel. Friends, I now come to the Indian benchmark bond yield. You know that we've basically uh, been ahead of the curve 
in talking about the relevance of the bond market because it is a fountain of all money supply for other asset classes. And we've given you ample amounts of investment opportunities to stay ahead of the curve. And a fortnight ago, I told you that laddering needs to be put on hold now. And look at what's happened to the 10-year benchmark bond yield. It slipped below the support level of the uh, trend line and it is now uh, uh, down for almost on this weekly chart it's been losing ground for nine consecutive weeks and it has violated the round number of seven so what do we do take heart i've already told you that a few windows had opened uh, uh, after uh, uh, first of april i hope you've deployed checks there and even uh, 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 with that uh, window of opportunity available to you, you would have got anything between 7.6 to 7.8% yield in sovereign uh, uh, backed investments. So we now move to plan B. We will be going in for guilt funds. Yes, we are going to go for guilt funds because rate cycle seems to have either almost peaked out or has peaked out. More will be known when the RBI Monetary Policy Committee meets in the first week of June. Friends, the bond market's done. I now come to the Bank Nifty, which led the rally from the front and rose on four out of five trading sessions as the daily chart on your screen indicates. The price is above its month-long moving average, which tells you that the short-term outlook still remains positive. And the 41,840 level, which I have been telling you to monitor as a support, has held. The bulls have defended it successfully. Now, what remains is the last mile resistance, which is at 44,152 mark. Now, as and when the price approaches a previous swing high, there is always some overhead supply coming in from traders who were trapped at earlier higher levels and have rolled over their long positions, incurred mark to market and cost of carry and are waiting to exit at break even or no profit, no loss basis. So whenever the markets approach a previous high, some amount of volatility, some amount of nervousness is evident, which is the reason why you are seeing the impetus in both the bank nifty and the nifty fell last week. Coming to the weekly chart, what you are seeing is the bank nifty has again logged a bullish candle a fairly prominent bullish candle but the 44,152 level needs watching the price is comfortably above its 25 week exponential moving average which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull that tells you that the medium term outlook also remains optimistic for now friends in the week before last, this index was at number three on our in-house statistical beta list of the most volatile counters. It fell one notch to number four, not just because the intra-week movement or impetus was low, but because stock specific volatility rose faster than the bank nifty. Now, a rising uh, uh, volatility is a challenge, whereas falling volatility is actually a boon and the bank nifty's volatility has come down by one notch that tells you that retail traders will have slightly easier time to trade the bank nifty last week in my live mint article i advocated a range between 44,025 on the upside and 41,300 on the downside which held perfectly well in the coming week I anticipate levels between 45,150 on the upside and 42,425 on the downside. Friends, the bank Nifty done. I now come to the Nifty 50, which gained on four out of five trading sessions, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen. And what you are seeing is that the Nifty has stayed stayed above the 18,115 level as indicated by the solid blue line. That's a, a Maginot line or a line for the bulls to defend in case of declines. As long as 18,115 holds, the bulls still have a chance. 
just like the bank nifty before it the nifty also has some other higher level resistance points to overcome before you can say that the market has basically absorbed the overhead supply this would be uh, close to 18360 levels and then 18600 levels here again as and when prices approach a previous peak there will be some amount of nervousness here the price is above the month long moving average so the short term outlook is positive coming to the weekly chart here you can see why i have indicated uh, the 18115 level it's holding as a support and why 18351 and then 18604 levels are indicated as last mile resistances the price is above its 25 week exponential moving average which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull medium term outlook also remains optimistic as of now so it is because the markets are precariously poised slightly below their recent swing highs that both the indices are logging lower impetus in the coming week i would want the impetus and the price to rise together and the lwtd to stay above zero with advanced decline ratio staying above one before i can write out checks and go long again in the market now in the week before last the nifty was at number eight on our statistical beta ranking list it fell eight notches to number 16 that means volatility came down part of the reason a uh, uh, narrower intraday range on these uh, sessions last week but also because uh, individual stock futures volatility rose faster than the nifty 50 and lower volatility is always welcome for an average retail trader a savvy trader will make money in higher volatility but an average joe will want lower volatility Last week in my uh, live mint column, I advocated a range between 18,500 on the upside and 17,625 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I expect a range between 18,750 on the upside and 17,875 on the downside. Friends, now for the last bit of statistical analysis that I share with you by uh, way of uh, the footprint of the retail risk appetite by their contribution to the percentage turnover that they clock in the four segments of the market stock and index futures and stock and index options what does it mean when uh, uh, stock and index futures turnover goes up vis-a-vis -vis stock and index options go up is explained in the video the hyperlink to which is in the description and in the pinned comment below so the Noticeable change that I have made in the graphic here is earlier I was comparing Friday on Friday. But now to give you a deeper understanding and perspective what I have done is the weekly average rather than compare one Friday with the other the following Friday. I have taken the week's average and taken a weekly chart instead of daily chart. So you are covering four and a half months now. In my opinion that gives you a far better perspective. So what you are seeing is the index futures turnover fell as a percentage uh, of the entire uh, uh, turnover in the FNO space. Stock futures turnover is also lower. Index options turnover has also fallen on a week on week basis. It is the stock options turnover which gained marginally. Now, Stock options are a little more volatile as compared to index options and therefore the risk appetite seems to have improved but because it is in the options and not futures where higher amount of capital by way of span margin mark to market etc is required. It tells me that as compared to the prior week risk appetite has definitely improved a little but it is improved in a very muted kind of a way in stock options rather than stock futures highest amount of turnover in stock futures tells you that risk appetite has gone through the roof that's not happening people have been cautious i don't blame them there were election results around the corner now we need to watch this uh, data extremely carefully in the coming days friends 
What am I going to do in the week ahead is something that I have started sharing with you since the last few weeks and here it goes. I will be uh, trading with an increased focus on NBFCs, non-banking financial corporations and oil marketing companies in conjunction with public sector banks or PSBs. And for a change, I'm not talking about theta decay in the option segment. I'm talking about naked futures exposure. It's a unidirectional call, extremely aggressive, high risk, but it will be on smaller footprint or smaller exposure levels. In the commodity space, I'm still betting that the divergence in price trends between oil and gas will continue in the coming week. And as far as uh, fixed income is concerned, laddering is something that I have stopped, which I had mentioned in my last video a fortnight ago that uh, uh, at 7 or sub 7% yield, it doesn't make sense for me to ladder the fixed income market anymore. In any case, we've laddered all through uh, uh, since October 2021. Uh, average yield is far above market uh, average. So we are sitting on a very comfortable, cushy place. Friends, I now come to the most popular segment of this video for the statistically minded trader, wherein I give you five stocks which have gained the most amount of impetus on Friday, where you take small exposure, wait for large price moves and five stocks which have lost the most amount of impetus, where you take big exposure, wait for small price moves. This is for scalpers, different traders, different risk appetite and mindsets and therefore different strategies. Now, the impetus gainers list is led by Aarti Industries, followed by Balram Purchini, Mahanagar Gas, Dr. Reddy's and Intellect. Biggest impetus losers list led by Crompton, PII Industries, IPCA Laboratories, Persistent and Walters. Friends, do remember this list is valid only for Monday, Tuesday through Friday. I update this list only on our free Telegram channel. Do make an effort to connect with me there. I would love to hear from my online family as to how my videos are helping you become better traders and what more content we can put in to make your trading journey an even more profitable one. Also, help me reach out to fellow like-minded smart traders like yourselves by sharing my videos with your family and friends and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. I thank you for your patience and being with me in this video till we meet again in my next. This is Vijay Bambani signing off for now. I wish you have a very, very profitable week ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.